Throughout the history, it has been the inaction of those who could have acted, the indifference of those who should have known better, the silence of the voice of justice when it mattered most that has made it possible for evil to triumph. It's better to give. Wise men have always known the deep and pervading truth that it is better to give than to receive. For even as it conflicts with selfish and ambitious desires, it moderates and controls them. Giving always demands sacrifice to overcome the temptation to enjoy mere daily comfort, to press resolutely and patiently forward on the scheduled way, or true test of the high degree of determination that should bind you together. Memories of past injustices should not divert us from the more pressing business at hand. We must live in peace with our former colonizers. Shunning recrimination and bitterness and forswearing the luxury of vengeance and retaliation, lest the acid of hatred erode our souls and poison our hearts. Let us act as befits the dignity which we claim for ourselves as Africans, proud of our own special qualities, distinctions and abilities. We must speak out on major issues courageously, openly, and honestly, and in blunt terms of right and wrong. If we yield to blandishments or threats, if we compromise when no honorable compromise is possible, our influence will be sadly diminished and our prestige woefully prejudiced and weakened. On this day, which men of earth and angels of heaven could neither have foreseen nor known, I give thanks unutterable by the mouth of man to the living God who has enabled me to be present among you today. Today is the beginning of a new era in the history of Ethiopia. Since this is so, do not reward evil for evil. Do not commit any act of cruelty like those which the enemy has commanded against us. Do not allow the enemy any occasion to foul our good name. We shall take this weapon, his weapon, and make him return by the way he entered. We believe in cooperation and collaboration to promote the cause of international security the equality of man and the welfare of mankind. We believe in the peaceful settlement of all disputes without resorting to force. And in accordance with the character and the charter of OAU, we will strive to eradicate colonialism, racism, apartheid from the face of the earth to frustrate the efforts being made by foreign powers to dictate the destiny of the African continent, and we will continue to stand. Conversations across time. 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 It can get worse. Political violence in America is as American as apple pie and motherhood. Going way back to when the colonists came here from England, there has been political discourse and political violence. I'm going to give a brief history of political violence in the United States, and I'm going to start with the duel between Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr. At the time, Aaron Burr was the sitting vice president of the United States, and Alexander Hamilton was the former secretary. Next, we move to... Kansas, Nebraska. Kansas was referred to as Bloody Kansas. The term was coined by a person who had been on our panel in the past, Horace Greeley. And it meant the violence that occurred in this territory over the issue of slavery. Kansas wanted to be admitted to the Union as a state, and they were going to vote on that, and the pro-slavery and anti-slavery people battled to see what side would win in the Constitution. 
in uh, pro-slavery people attacked Lawrence, Kansas and killed 40 abolitionists or anti-slavery people. And in retaliation, John Brown beheaded four pro-slavery settlers. Next, we move to the United States Senate. Senator Charles Sumner, senator from Massachusetts who was an abolitionist, made a strong anti-slavery speech on the floor of the United States Senate. In that speech, he accused Senator Butler of South Carolina of taking the mistress, the mistress being slavery. In retaliation for that, Preston Brooks, Brooks the representative of South Carolina, three days later, snuck up behind Charles Sumner in the Senate and beat him to a pulp with a cane. Next, we come to the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Of course, everyone knows John Wilkes Booth assassinated President Lincoln. However, we know it was for political reasons. It was in, in retaliation for Link, Lincoln winning the war and the Southerners being uh, deprived of slavery. Two other presidents were assassinated in the latter half of the 19th century. President Garfield was assassinated by an office holder who wanted a government job, and President McKinley was assassinated by an anarchist, certainly political assassinations. Later on, there were attempts at many presidents' life. I'll just mention two. One was, of course, President Truman by Puerto Rican nationals uh, in the Blair House when the White House was being uh, renovated. And of course, there was an attack four years later in the House of Representatives. Four Puerto Rican nationals were able to gain admittance to the House of Representatives seated in the ladies' balcony, and they fired randomly at the House of Representatives, wounding five members of the House who were, at, ironically, debating immigration. We also have the assassination attempts on President uh, Franklin Roosevelt in Miami, in which the mayor of Chicago was killed. And we also have, of course, the assassination of John Kennedy. So as we reach today with the uh, wounding of Representative Scalise, what we have to do is dial back the violence. We can have political discourse without resorting to guns, without resorting to bombs. So watch carefully because we're going to talk about what needs to be done to have political discourse, but to stem the tide of violence, because it can get worse. Good evening. Welcome once again to Conversations Across Time. For our regular viewers, you will note that we are in a different studio setup, and what that means for the audience is that this is more of a tutorial. So I'm going to go around the table and introduce our guests tonight, and you will recognize them as members of the ensemble who play a number of characters, but, but tonight, two of them are here as in their own persona. So we will start at Mr. Irv Madnick, Irv Madnick Esquire. And you've seen Irv playing so many roles, and we asked him here because his opinions as a trial attorney are very <coughs> interesting for what is going on in the country today. So Irv, I want to thank you for being here. It's my pleasure. And I, I'm looking forward to that fiery defense counsel <laughs> personality. We'll see. We'll see, we'll <laughs> see. <laughs> Uh, seated next to Irv is Mark Hoffman. Mark Hoffman needs no introduction because Mark Hoffman is the show historian. He has played more roles than we can remember. And uh, what we like about Mark is he teaches us. He, he gives you a tutorial because he was a former history teacher and he is the show historian. His job is to keep us honest. So Mark, thank you for being here. Good to be here. Seated next to Mark is the Emperor Haile Selassie. And uh, Emperor Selassie was the emperor of Ethiopia from 1930 to 1974. Your, your position was always a, one of moral clarity. So it, with that in mind, we'd like you to just during this whole series to think about how you see things and, and be judgmental. That's, that's perfectly mm -hmm. fine with us. So Mark, you started us off with the, uh, with the past history and some egregious acts that happened. Yes. Well, right now, you know, we're saying that there's a crossroads and with uh, the shooting of Representative Scalise, this, I mean, I, I know I called you early in the morning when, the, when we found out about the shooting crying, and that was at that point we decided we needed to do a show on violence in America. 
Uh, is there anything that you want to illuminate for the audience? Well, that we're not going to minimize what happened to Representative Scalise, but as I said in the introduction, violence, political violence, especially in the United States, when passions get revved up and there's a lack of leadership to stem the passions on either side, we uh, resort to political violence. And, and uh, what we're trying to do here is, and the title of the show is, it can't get worse unless we as a nation agree to not act in ways that are overtly violence. We're looking for a long period of more violence and more shootings, and it's not ISIS and it's not Muslim terrorists that are going to do it. It's going to be people within the country who have political gripes. It, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a national policy of violence. I mean, there are crazy people in this country, and uh, a lot of people are crazy and have guns, and these things are just bound to happen. Yeah, but I don't think it's a national policy. I think I don't mean it's a national policy, but I mean if you rev up the rhetoric and you say it's all right to use violence to achieve your political goal, which some people said. I mean, when at that point candidate Trump said that if Hillary Clinton is elected and she gets to appoint judges, maybe we need to have a Second I Amendment resolution of that, which means take guns and, you know, well, use them. No, that's true. No, no, I agree. I agree with you. I mean, there, there's, there's definitely that in the background. These the people's passions are aroused, and it can be on either right. side. No, I, mean, agree with, can, I agree can, with you there. I we can go that. back to the, the, the issue of slavery. It which can is, be worse. There's no question a, about a it. a paramount issue in American history, and when the abolitionists rev up the passion on one side, and the Southerners rev up the passion on the other side, and then you get somebody that's a little mentally deranged, and here's, and I, I, I think all the time, what would have happened in, in between the pro-slavery and the abolitionists if we had Twitter and that's, Facebook and, that was and what cable I wanted news? To bring up. There would have been, instead of 40 people, there would have been 240 people killed. Instead of John Brown lopping off people's heads, there would have been Way more violence. And, and this is and what more people were killed in the Civil War than in any other war. Right. And, and so we didn't need Twitter for that. Yeah, but, but I'm, but I'm just saying prior to the Civil right. War. But, but here's what's interesting, and, 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 and both of you have sort of alluded to this. The technology today has made these wingnuts much more dangerous. Absolutely. Because people, people tend to believe things that they read online or in certain newspapers and publications. Uh, that could be fake, real fake news, yes. and they believe it, and they especially believe it if it's repeated over and over again, which yes. is, tends to be what happens today. Yes. I mean, the perfect example is that, that kookaboo that went up to the pizza, pizza store in Bethesda oh my goodness. because he believed that the yes, Democrats yeah. were, were fostering a child, 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 child and molestation child prostitution, out of it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, how but crazy can that be? By the way, the one, the one who really promulgated that was uh, uh, Flynn's son. Right. So, and Flynn had a little bit to do with that too. But, so, but, but I mean, that can, that's really unbelievable. But, but the but thing is, the extremes, it does happen. the extremes make heroes of the people that do this. Like, during the uh, Kansas, Nebraska, and the pro slavery, anti slavery battles, John Brown became a hero. A folk hero. Right. Uh, uh, Preston Brooks, when he beat up uh, Senator Sumner in, on his Florida Senate, he became a hero to his house. That's what we all want to be like. So, when you make the extremists, the people to resort to uh, violence, the hero of the, mo uh, the movement, then we're really looking for trouble. And what we have now, I think, with the cable news is the right-wing news makes heroes out of the right-wing extremists, and the left-wing news makes heroes. And so there's no middle ground. And you talk about it all the time, Herb, that we, that's what we need to do. We need some moderates in the middle to stem all this. And it, it's not enough for... Uh, Nancy Pelosi to say to Paul Ryan when he says we all got to get together. It's the first time I agree with you, Mr. Speaker. Day, right, the last one day, <laughs> yeah. and, and we do if need that. we do need leadership, and we need we need the president to, to not just say I'm sorry he got shot, and our prayers go out to his family, and our prayers go. Out. He needs to say we need to stop this violence. I need to stop the the, the, the rhetoric that turns people towards the extreme. I need to try to bring people together. I, and every time he tweets something, every time he, t and, and even now, 
that he beat Hillary Clinton, he still refers to her as Hillary Clinton. How does that stem from a mentally ill person? I mean, I, she might get assassinated. I wouldn't, that wouldn't even surprise me. I mean, there's no need for it. There's no, he beat her in the election. Why does he need to tweet out crooked Hillary and the Democrats? There's no need for it anymore. And the emperor ruled, the, you ruled from 1930 to 1974 in Ethiopia. Certainly in some very trying times, and there were all kinds of issues that were going on. I mean, you had Somalia on one side wanting to be free from, from, from being under Ethiopian authority. And yet, at the same time, you held to a strong moral compass. This is, this is, it's frightening to me because we don't seem to have leaders that have an interest in promulgating any sort of harmony. Uh, well, from what, from what Mark has said and what Earp has said so far, I, I see um, the proposition being one of, of contention versus cooperation in the world okay. itself. It's, it's not about who's sitting it in on the throne or in the in the White House or whatever icon of legend that rules a country, but it has to do with the moral base of the society. We talk about the society, we talk about the citizens, but from one administration to the other, when you have a democracy, the people are the ones who choose who they are going to follow. And if they follow someone who has no credentials or or capabilities of le leading them to, uh, to any progressive state of existence, they can only follow the Pied Piper to the river okay. and go into, uh, into the ocean and drown. So if you vote for the Pied Piper because you like his music, the tune he's playing, then you will go into the river uh, along with the people who follow him. Um, what, the, what I think is going on in America today is the fact that people are subjected to badge and fancy trimmings toward the empty vessel. They are looking at uh, the packaging that has an aura to it, something that is something that we want to follow because it's different. And it happens every year, every... So, so wait a minute, so are, let me, let me just, are we saying that, or are you saying that perhaps what's going on right now in the United States is that the mentality that we see with, with with 45, it's very hard for me to call him That's President right. Trump, Excellent. is a fad? It's a, fa it's a fancy of the, if, of the people who elect to have someone designated as their leader because they, they, they cater to his whims and they need someone to, they, it's almost like the, they are the children, he's the daddy and he's abusing them but they love him anyway because they need that, that figure in their life to say, He's our person. He's the one who's going to look out for us, although he's kicking them in their ass every day. Well, and that, that brings us to something that's going on right now, this discussion about health care, which is happening in secret. Right. We don't really know what's going on. And, 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 and perhaps by, by the time that this show airs, maybe there will have been a decision, maybe there will have been a vote. But, but the difference is that... Um, we don't have to know if we trust the fact that the man driving the car is not going to run off the road. We don't have to know. Do we trust that? There are some who do and some who don't. Those who don't trust him have their eyes open and see that the road he's traveling upon is, is, um, is loaded with the kinds of potholes and sinkholes that we've <laughs> seen before on traveling. Mm -hmm. The travelers understand when the road gets rocky, you can be in a dead sleep, and when it hits one of those potholes, you, you come to a halt. You, you're startled by it. Well, te technically, uh, let's use the health healthcare bill. Okay. I mean, the fact that they are working in in secret, in camera, so to speak, yeah. to develop what they think is the best healthcare bill. As long as they, if they do that, there's nothing wrong about that. As long as they bring it forward for, once they've developed what they're what program the is, is to bring it out so that everybody can see it and discuss it and go over it. I mean, if they're just going to do it in secret and then just the next day bring it up for a vote without anybody reading it or knowing about it, well, that's that's not the way this democracy is supposed to work. Well, it's not. Yeah, it's not. It's not a democracy. <laughs> well, it's not. A, it's it's a, it's most. Our democracy. Well, it's most yes, like a monarchy because when in the palace life in the in the oh. in the life in the realm of leadership. Um, 
sometimes it's necessary not to have everyone know everything that everyone else knows because if you but that's don't, power, well, that's, that's always been the case here. But, you know, but, but, but but power is politics. That it's, it's so interesting that what we are talking we are. about. Is 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 a monarchy? Exactly. You're not talking about that. You're talking democracy because you think he was voted in democratically, which he was not. That everyone who uh, works with him agrees with him as his subjects and followers, his administrators. They do not. He doesn't even get briefs from the people who understand more about his. Well, I, I believe he doesn't even know what the Constitution yeah, says about but being see, a, a ruler. But in the this level, country. the level of frustration on the part of the people, and maybe even his followers. So now you have a bill in the Senate that they're trying to uh, sneak through uh, and not let the people know. And what people's frustration are and their level of frustration. Just hypothetically, suppose that this bill goes through, passes, uh, uh, President. Donald Trump signs it, and a man who's frustrated to start with, his daughter has cancer, is thrown off medical care, and she dies. And the level of violence in this country, it wouldn't surprise me if he takes a gun and goes after a congressman or a senator or even a president, because that's where we are right well, that now. that can happen with anybody. I know, but if, if you're transparent and you're honest with the people, well, of course, we'll and then the people understand what their legislators are doing, and whether you agree or not, at least there's a degree of, okay, I was able to participate. I knew what was going on. I wasn't, and I hate to use this word, uh, I wasn't screwed. I was going to use another <laughs> word. But, but that the people feel that way. And, and so when, when they feel that frustration and that level of frustration, they feel there's no alternative. I think there was a movie with uh, Denzel Washington uh, where his son couldn't get medical care and he, he resorted to violence and he, he, he got, took hostages. Yeah. And that, that's what happens mm -hmm. when, when people are frustrated. And why they do, I mean, they, they, it, it's, see, to me, both sides are at a point now where they don't even want to listen to the other side. They, you know, I, 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 I used the Civil War before, it's the same thing. The abolitionists didn't want to listen to any of the Southerners that are pro, and certainly the, the pro-slavery people, they burnt abolitionist newspapers, they try to list ab lynch abolitionists. So we're reaching out, and as we said to start with, it could get worse if we don't t tamp down the rhetoric and if the leaders have to stand. Now, one of the problems before the Civil War, we had some very weak presidents. What most people don't know <laughs> it's is that if the Democrats, Obama and yeah. the Democrats, had their way, they would have passed a single-payer policy, yes. much like Medicaid, for everybody in this country would have a public option to get insurance if they wanted to, and if they wanted to expand on it like people in Medicare can, yeah with Medicaid Advantage programs, that's what they really wanted to do. But they knew that they couldn't ever get that through and passed, so they developed a bill that was actually promulgated by the Heritage Foundation, which, which is the most right-wing, <laughs> conservative <laughs> yes. outfit in the, in the whole country, <laughs> and only because they Obama put Obama's Obama. name on it, Obamacare, yes. that is everybody Everybody is willing to do away and, with and it President without Obama even looking at how it's going to affect them personally. And uh, President Obama didn't put his name on it. Absolutely it's what not. it's what his because they put they his know. name on it. Yes. It's like it's it's like branding. It's like advertising. Yes. Right? We we could we can negatively sell it with Obama if we tell people it's the Affordable Care Act and it helps them. We can't negatively sell it. But I'm glad I'm glad you brought up the uh, health care bill because at least in some of my reading. One of the things that set, set off uh, Mr. I shouldn't call him Mr. But Hot Hodgkinson, yes. the one who's, who uh, shot, who shot really, at the Republican was the vote of the Republican House of Representative members on the current health care bill. Now, That's now one, let's, of, one let's, of the things that set him over the edge. Let's make sure our audience understands. When, we, when we're talking about Hodgkinson, he is the shooter who went to a baseball practice. For the GOP. We, we, we say Hodgkin, he was a little deranged and he was radicalized. Mm -hmm. Imagine somebody like, I mean, John Brown killed a lot of people and he was lopping off their heads. Imagine if he had automatic oh weapons goodness. or maybe. Oh, sure. So when people get that radicalized, and they can be political and they can still be a little off, and that goes together, who knows what can happen. So, yeah, definitely, yeah, you know, if we're and by the way, it stretches to terrorism, too. Right. You see when yeah. the kid walked into that the, the uh, club in Orlando with an automatic weapon, he could kill 60 people at a yes. time before yes. anybody even noticed he was there. 
I mean, it's, it's crazy, and yet every time they try, and Sandy Hook with all those kids. Now, may I say this? When Sandy Hook happened, didn't you think, well, this is it. Right. This is it. We if that wasn't it, get... it was never, exactly. you could say it was, it was never going to well, happen. Yeah, but look, you, have, you have a country right now where the president of the United States right now embraces the man mm -hmm. who said, Sandy Hook was a hoax and the kids were set up, they were all yes. actors. Now, once you have that, <laughs> yes. how are you even going to start right. settling violence? He even appeared on his show, Al by the way. That was right, right. Movie. Alex Jones, he loves him. It's his buddy. And this man <laughs> says it was a hoax. So if you have the leader of the country saying when innocent school children are massacred and he embraces the man that says it's a conspiracy and it's a hoax, how are we going to move any, any further? That's impossible. That's why, I, I mean, I don't think he's going to change, but until he changes, getting back to the topic, how it could get worse. How is he different than King George when uh, the United States Revolutionary wanted to break from Britain? Uh, how is it that, what is, the, what is the tipping point that would cause the American people, which is such a nebulous term, they are, the American people are not homogeneous. They're not homogeneous. They're not homogeneous. No. So you have homophobics, you have xenophobics, you have white supremacists, you have black nationalists, you have whatever the term may call mm -hmm. itself uh, or be labeled as. There's no American people. There's a hodgepodge of folk who are, whose heads jump around like woodpeckers from day to day based mm -hmm. on the commercialism of selling products in a capitalist society. Which keep, and there's no conversation about how to improve life there's more about to respond to the violence that's being perpetrated upon one another. Because yeah, there's no I, middle ground anymore. That's yeah, the whole point. There's I, no compromise. Yeah. Listen, there were, there were always right-wing wingnuts and left-wing wingnuts, mm -hmm. but there was always somebody, up until most recently, there were people in the middle who could compromise positions to come out with something that was good for, the, for everybody. Both sides call yeah. the people that want to compromise snowflakes. Yeah. Right. Both sides do it. Yeah. 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 So, so it's a negative. If you want to, if you want to be a moderate and say, okay, we can work this out. You're a snowflake if you're a right winger that wants to work it out, and you're a snowflake if you're a left winger that wants to work it out. And to, to His Excellency's comment about George, yeah, George cracked down just like Trump would crack down, and every one of the American patriots they would call terrorists. Patrick Henry would be a terrorist in England and London to King George, just like the, the uh, Muslims are, t uh, you know, ISIS and those people right. are terrorists and Donald terrorists. Trump. Yes. Philando Castile, people like that, they're terrorists. And, and people get shot down just for being, for being. Who they are. Right. They, yes. the, them, or them. Or and now, you know, one of our, one of the, 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 the um, one of, one of our guests, on this show, one of the friends of Conversations Across Time is, is Dr. Adler. And Dr. Adler does a wonderful and did a, you know, came mm -hmm. and talked to us about defining people as the other. We are hardwired to be tribal. I think that's the primal force. That we can't change that. What we can change and should change is the code of conduct we extend toward the other side, okay? Yes, there will always be subdivisions, uh, but, uh, and, and we have to work around that, we can't deny it, we can't deny prejudice, it just uh, impairs our ability to deal with it. But what is learned is how you treat the other. Do you, uh, do you tolerate them, do you respect them, do you, uh, ethnically cleanse them, which is the old-fashioned way. And in right. fact, uh, it's a good Not old so old-fashioned. When I, when I uh, well, you're, you're, you're both lawyers, I, I chuckle when I hear about judges saying they want the Ten Commandments in their courtroom because that will teach morality. Uh, for starters, the uh, Ten Commandments sanctions uh, slavery and, yeah. and, and stoning your neighbor to death. Yep. As long as you can define and you can dehumanize, and this is, this is what's happening, the, the demonization that is going on, and it happens on both sides. Believe it or not, we're at the end of an episode. Oh my goodness. I, I know, I know, and we, we are going to talk about, we're gonna talk about the changes. So I, I, I know we're all revved up because this is where we're headed. Please tune in next week for 
the continuation of this conversation across time. Thank you. Conversations across time. 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 Conversations across time